Clay 100%. has a 100% win rate here yep. in the MPL in Season 7. And there you go. Wow. The Pukito as the first pick, denying that pick from the side of Onyx Esports and also getting it for themselves is going to be huge. Albert is sitting at a very high win rate as well on this Pukito. You know, 75% right now. Now, it is very, very good, and it also can be flexed to R7, who has played this to a very, you know, very successfully as well. 75% Eight times as well. he's played, and it's 75%. So both wow. of the players from the side of Haruki Hoshi are, you know, just lethal on this hero. But Ooh. on eSports, decide to take the Esmeralda away from Zin, putting it to the hands of Boots, maybe. And we are going to take a look. Maybe the Farsa ban. Hey, Farsa pick, I mean. Yep, I predicted picking. it. It is going to be the Farsa pick coming in from Drian to take it away from Clay as well. So Clay already forced to play something he's not comfortable with. Usually, if we don't see the Farsa or the Yeve, we do see the Lunox from the side of RRQ. And there you go. That's going to be the Lunox and the picking. Ruby as well. R7 taking it away right now, but it can also be played as the Roamer by Vin. Yep, it's going to be really, really interesting what Onyx Esports will actually respond to this with the Ruby coming into play as well as a Lunox. But by the way, other than the teams at a sitting at 100% win rate, Mirko is actually like sitting at a 100% win rate as well in his predictions. And Onyx Esports will close the picks here with a YSS coming into play here, possibly most likely for Sans. We haven't seen the Yi Sun Shin being that prio the, like for the whole season, but no, we haven't. in the playoffs, it's been a very like com it's been rising up, I should say, in mm -hmm. terms of the pick rate and also in terms of the win rate. Or just now, Onik had a very very hard game against Yi Sun Shin. Yi Sun Shin was able to, I guess, dominate them just now on the hands of Fairsick, but now. Sans picking it up again. Remember back in season seven, Sans was also also very very lethal on the season Shin, one of his most uh, played heroes back in the ranked mode. But we are gonna take a look at the statistics for both of the mid laners. Clay, the all time leader here with Albert in KDA, seven point one. Yep, and he has the higher KDA and a higher kill participation as well. And he loses out only in GPM to Drian. So take from that what you will, but every time there's been a big team fight, Clay, I think, has always has big impact. You know, even even if he wasn't the main carry in the fight, he's just able to make things happen for his team. And he's never able to be ignored completely by the opposition. Yesterday we saw him with on the Yeev, uh, basically forcing forcing boots on Onyx Esports to you know in a tough situation to either stop his real world manipulation on the Yeev or team back is out. Banning. So stuff like that is very impressive from Clay here. And respecting Drian's pick as well, banning the Kaja, Araki Hoshi with one more ban will have to see on the esports with the final ban. Your team will is ha banning. Take away the Karina. Taking away the Karina is actually really, really interesting here from the side of Onyx Esports because Rainbow Albert hasn't played the Karina at all here. Uh, based on the regular season data and based on the playoff data, it is going to be Araki Hoshi again banning away this. Phobius, perhaps with the Phobius ban, they might be leaning towards an assassin pick for the side of Araki Hoshi. Maybe a Lancelot, but on oh, it instantly it goes for the Aldous pick for that gold lane. Again, we've never seen CW on this hero before. This is going to be the debut for CW's yeah. Aldous in Season 8. Yeah, I mean, we haven't seen CW on the 1-1 one -one as well, and that came through yeah. really, really well for them, being able to actually take the win against Evos. So... Honestly, I'm not going to be surprised if it's actually going to be a game changer here coming in from Onyx Esports as we're waiting on the last two picks here to level out, to complete the combination here coming in from Araki Hoshi it in might, terms of drafting, but Arashi... It might be a coup for here just because there's a lot of dashes on the side of Onyx Esports and always, as always, Vin really likes those engaged heroes, so maybe that will play out. Uh, the fact that there's a lot of very mobile targets. I was thinking maybe a troll was possibly, but no. It's going to be the Balmain and the Alice. The Balmain huh. and the Alice picked up for the side of RRQ Hoshi. It'll mean that the Pekito may be the one going to the jungle. It is going to be... Wait, no, it's going to be... Yeah, Pekito in the yeah. jungle, Balmain playing, played by R7, Zin on that Alice, and it's going to be Ruby played in that Roamer position. And now we are going to see Onyx Esports with their final pick here in the draft. They're still missing a Roamer. And Kaja is open. If they want a single target hero that can just instantly take it away. Oh, Kaja was banned. My bad. But what else is open here? I guess if they want a single target ability, if they want a single target lockdown hero, mm -hmm. Cho is still opened yep. up. Jawhead yep. is banned away. So it is most probably going to be the Cho or Raphaela. Yep, I think Cho is actually a good bet. But oh. actually, wait, what? Wait, what? It's actually going to be a Eudora pick coming to play here for Onyx Esports. Roamer. So two, three magic damage what? heroes here for the side of Onyx Esports. And is this is this a good pick, guys? We're mm, 
it's it has potential. Game. It has potential. They're gonna go. They're going up against someone as sustainable as an Alice, right? Someone that needs to be bursted down. So the Euro Eudora can definitely shut. Alice down, shut a lot of the heroes down from the side of RRQ in the early game. That's what they want to do. Yeah. So I guess it is an okay pick, but we're going to see both sides right mm -hmm. here as from the side of RRQ and Onyx Esports. They are all ready. The viewers, the supporters right there, back in the hotel room, the substitute players and the coaches and even the CEOs waiting and, you know, just chilling for the fight right now as we're just getting, we're moments away from getting into the game. Yes, we're moments away from getting to the game, but introduce us into it, Mirko. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the land of dawn right here. Araki Hoshi and Onik Esports in the grand finals. Welcome to game number one. RRQ already pushing the pace here in the early game, trying to get that pressure in the mid lane as it's going to be Drian and Keyboy forced to maybe back away right now. Drian is going to take and um, actually switch sides here, and uh, RRQ will be the ones clearing the waves faster. Okay, so we have two mid lane mage damagers here in the mid side. So we're gonna have to see how they can actually use this momentum that maybe they can actually get a better early aggression knowing that Lunox isn't too good here in the early game. But as you can see here on the bottom side, CW already putting a lot of pressure onto Zin here, knowing that Zin needs to be shut down from the get-go, especially on a hero scaling to the late game like Alice. Yeah, I actually prefer Araki Hoshi's draft here in the game. I feel like they're just better, like well, more well-rounded here. They have range, they have burst damage, they have consecutive damage, and it's just all around a pretty good composition. Whereas from the side of Onyx Esports, they don't really have a lot of front line, right? If RRQ are able to dive to that back line, which is exactly what their composition was designed to do. I don't think there's anything on Esports can do to get away or maybe peel or cover for his carries. Yeah. Maybe that's where Keyboy actually comes into play. Maybe he's the one supposed to be waiting in the midst of it all to take down someone who will actually go into very aggressively. Like RRQ Hoshi likes to play around, but as you can see here in the top side, Mountain Shock hasn't popped off to get his team a little bit of vision here to give some communication as it seems like something might be brewing here, Mirko. Yeah, so Something's ruining Oprah. That was definitely Albert gonna pick up the first blood right now. Oh. Armwood connects onto two. It's gonna be Boots going in or Albert in a 1v3 situation. Still trying to cut away as that's gonna be in a lot of damage as R7 oh. jumps in with a lethal counter, unable Ooh. to get the kill. It's gonna be Dreon picking up the front with a double kill. But if the air strike comes in and Clay is forced to back away, it is gonna be the turtle as the focus right now for the side of Onyx Esports as they are just gonna be able to burst it down. RRQ have no response for Onyx Esports early aggression. Yeah, a two for zero trade there for the side of Onyx Esports and another objective also so taken for themselves so it's not looking good too good for Araki Hoshi as of right now as Onyx Esports are putting a lot of momentum here and taking the momentum for themselves but as you can see here Vin and Clay will be trying to take that middle lane here taking away from Drian and Sans being able to take his own bush but here actually Zin goes a little aggressively maybe looking for a pick somewhere for sure on Esports again CW on this, all the skills unlimitedly. But R7 and Boots already going at it. In that XP lane, it is going to be Boots winning out on the trades and getting the clear right here as both of the XP laners go for the recalls. But RRQ are waiting right now, waiting to get Sans in that picture. But it is going to be Sans just taking away with the Retribution. Zin forced to use that Flowing Blood. And oh, actually, Ooh. the predictions coming in from Gian going and sniping him with that Flowing Blood. Wow, amazing plays coming in from Onyx Esports. And honestly, I've seen a lot of those plays coming in from them, right? They've, they're really, they're, they're able able over and over to be able to predict these movements and I think Araki Hoshi really need to give them the I'd say the the yeah the, yeah. the opportunity the momentum yes exactly that is exactly what I meant there Arashi as now Boots as well as Sans are rotating towards the top side putting a little pressure onto R7 but I think R7 will read this movement very very well oh R7 doesn't just read the situation but he also capitalizes on it but RRQ are already bringing four members down to the bottom side Drion and Keyboy are looking for it as well Zin goes in for the I'm offended CW oh, gonna no. go catch chain CC and that's gonna be Zin picking up the kill with the help of Albert right there as the Mountain Shocker comes Zin Zin RRQ will have to back away but that was a clean clean dive from the side of RRQ getting a kill on their side and putting themselves two to two Yes, 2-2-2 two two indeed, but it seems like Onyx Esports are still leading in terms of resources here. They do have a 2k gold lead at the moment, as it seems like the turtle will actually spawn in the land of dawn. So we're just going to have to see if both teams will be rotating towards that area. And it seems like Araki Hoshi might have the upper hand here, getting a little setup here, opening up vision. But now Sans actually will be the one to start the turtle first. Yeah, on Esports, Sans using the Yisen Shin to great effect already, trying to clear the waves, trying to clear the turtle, my bad, right here, as it is going to be... Oh, oh my god, I'm a very dumb turtle, 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 I'm a very dumb turt
first, jumps down. Now, the damage coming in back at it again. Albert trying to go in all the way to the backside. Lethal counter will be able to pick up the kills. And that's going to be Albert jumping around and getting away. The baby alien once again shows what he's made of here in game what? number one. The team fight gods are our Kyohoshi, man. Three members down from the side of Onik Esports just like that. Only traded for one member from RQ Hoshi, and that is what we expect from RQ. They are so good at turning these things around, Arashi. Now looking here, Albert already has the War Axe, so a lot of damage coming out from him, as well as R7 with similar items. And the Red clay on the Luna already scaling with the Clock of Destiny, as well as Sin. So despite having two heroes that really require some scaling, they are already taking the momentum early on in this match. That is a scary look for all the Ooh, Look at the damage coming from Albert going in on a 1v3. is going to be bursted down, but oh. he will try to look for something as Sans picks up the shutdown. The game is not over. Sans is a scaling marksman in the jungle. This is going to be a huge shutdown, a pickup for on Esports as Boots is waiting right there. Might look for a fight here, but I guess it is just way too risky. He needs to go back away as RQ will be able to pick up that little Wanderer. Already rotating to the top side. Vin goes in for Diamond Fendit, connects onto Sans, but there's no follow up just yet. The gold buff. Oh my god, Boots gets in. A point diamond on the dude. Feather Strike comes in as well as R7 joins in the team fight. Not going to be able to be enough as Keyboy goes in for the stun. Sans is going to try to hit it onto Ooh. R7, but the lethal counter will be able to dodge and dash away. R7, got to be careful there. The Mountain Shocker almost takes him down as well, but both teams not dying. Wow, no casualties in that previous team fight, and this is what we expect in the oh, grand me. finals Hero of the upper wait, wait, what? What, what happened there is Keyboy actually gets picked off really, really early. I wonder what happened in that situation, but it seems like Albert will be rotating towards the top side, putting a little pressure onto Boots, knowing that Boots also does scale into the late game. They do want to try to shut him down early on, knowing that Boots has so much impact later on in the game stages. He just knows when to go in, when to make an impact for his team, and sometimes he can actually turn the tables around. But now, as you can see, it will be on Esports, busy in their own uh, jungle, as Arki Hoshi are already opening towards that next turtle and taking it for themselves. Uncontested turtle, again, on Esports can really contest here in the early game. They need to wait for their jungler to scale up for the Aldus and Farsa, and also Esmeralda. They're a full scaling composition, so if they do go get to the late game fairly, it is going to be really, really good as Vin is going to get chunked quite low right there, all ready to quarter HP. On Esports will be able to pick up the pace here in this Whoa. seventh minute of the game, but CW already going for it for a dive all the way to R7. Will be able to cancel it right before it hits the turret. That's going to be a kill onto Clay out of nowhere in the mid lane. Wow as Clay has to go down out of the Land of Dawn and it is them just trading kills and now the gold is actually equal. Both teams sitting at a 21.6k gold at the moment as Vin was trying to look for a pickup onto any members of the side of Onyx Esports but unfortunately will not be able to connect it just yet. But honestly, Vin has actually played really, really well on this Ruby being able to pick off a lot of members coming in from the side of Onyx Esports. Huge right now as Albert goes in for the purple buff. will be able to take it for himself on esports though even though they're losing in kills they are winning in turrets getting a hundred gold lead is pretty good for them considering that again they are a late game composition yep. and with that composition they really need to try and buy some time but it's, instead of doing that they're just actually going really aggressively and RQ seems to be a bit struggling to actually deal with the you know with the aggression and with how much CW is farming right now because he's been left alone for quite a while and he's for sure accumulating a lot of stacks and here R7 goes to try and stop this whole process. Oh, yes. but wait a minute, CW is gonna go all the way there, Eterna. Yes, it seems like CW will be going all the way there, but not Ooh. too much. Really, really disciplined plays coming in from CW. He doesn't want to commit onto anything just Whoa. yet. Oh, look at that! It will Oi. be Keyboy getting caught in this bad situation. Rian using Moonblazing is just to escape. Sans doing what he can, and Zin going very aggressively on to Boots, but now it will be Boots giving it back to them with the Falling Star Moon as Rian will be forced to escape as of right now, but Boots is the center of all the attention here coming in from Arki Hoshi, but then they are able to get out of that. So a one-for-one one trade right now. CW, though, has been hitting freely on the top side. Zin will go in for the Blowing Blood. Immobility has been used, but CW has a lot of damage. Zin wins out in the long for long trades, but he has to be careful because he does not lifesteal. He doesn't heal that much just yet. He goes to the Winning Waves, getting a lot more um, uh -oh. health back in. But it's going to be RRQ already rotating three members here to the top side. CW will look to try to maybe ult out of this fight as that's going to be the Lord actually chunked down by Onyx Esports. They're trying to run away, and Aldis will be able to right now. It's going to get cancelled instantly by CW. Ooh. is still going to be able to get away wow. with the Lord taken away. That's beautiful wow. by Onyx Esports. What 
a very, very five head play from the gold laner from the side of Oni Esports, getting that absolutely what? brilliant. What? I, okay, Araki Hoshi really loves that pickoff play, and Oni Esports capitalized that on that very, very well. And CW was able to buy so much time for his team, and now it is actually the Lord in their hands pushing into the base of RRQ. And honestly, that was brilliant, guys. Man, that was beautiful from the side of Oni Esports. Getting the distraction in the top side and instantly knowing wow. that, okay, Ara Kiyoshi, they're going, they're going to commit to that dive. They're going to commit to that gang in the top side. Let's just go for the objective. Let's get the Lord right now. And Ara Q, they're getting completely out macroed in this game, even though they got seven kills to six, three turrets to one, and that Lord says otherwise. Yes, and Onyx Esports are doing what they do best. It shows in the statistics that Onyx Esports are actually a very... Team Wait, Ooh. what? Vin the power gets of... caught it gets caught out of the bat. Oh, wait, what? Okay, Zin is actually the one to get picked off first, and now it is Onik Esports with five men over a four man here, aside from Araki Hoshi, and we're just gonna have to see how Onik Esports will do. Look at that, 5,000 gold lead now. The airstrike has been popped. Albert now going to the back side, oh. almost one-shotting Drian as he is forced to back away. That's a lot of damage. You do not want this man to be able to dive like that. You want some cover right here because you can see there the damage from Albert, literally almost one-shotting Drian. And this is gonna be the mountain shot to reveal everyone on the map. RRQ needs to be very, very careful in these fights. So, has, and Onik needs to be careful as well. But look at that, hashtag battle has been won by Viva RRQ for now. But where are you guys at, man? Your team is winning. Hashtag go Onik or hashtag Viva RRQ because the hashtag battle will continue. Vin already dashing into the front. I'm afraid it has been used on the CW. A lot of damage coming in, but the Fact will be able to zone everyone away. As Sans joins in the team fight, going in onto Vin. It is going to be a lot of damage placed onto both of the teams, but R7 is going to get bursted down. Sans dashes it one more time to kick up the kill, as that's going to be Albert dashing away, dashing in, and dashing out. So Onyx Esports have picked up one for zero as they're looking for the base right now. The siege will continue, and that's Onyx Esports picking up the inhibitor turret as well. Honestly, I didn't expect this coming in from Onyx Esports. They are putting up a fight against RQ Hoshi. RQ Hoshi aren't looking too good. They are getting picked off all across the board, and now it is Onyx Esports actually leading with a 7k gold and honestly Arashi how is this possible? Well they're just actually macroing so well and the pickup potential again coming in from Kibo it is just a style that he really enjoys doing and now on a hero like the Eudora he has the option of even making the huge burst all on his own without waiting for his team so it's a very risky situation because there is no front line at, as far as the mid game goes but when they're this ahead, and when the C and CW on the Aldus can serve as a frontline later on, I think this was a very smart and very aggressive strategy coming in from the side of Onyx Esports. As we look at the items, he has a Genius one and also a Holy Crystal. And with the Genius one lowering the magic resistance, there's a lot of synergy coming in with the Esmeralda as well as the Farsa on his team. So. Drian now with the Clock of Destiny, Lightning Trench and Combo can just burst down all the squishier members on the side of Araki Hoshi. And if they itemize to go against this magical burst, they're gonna fall victim Ooh. to CW and the huge amount of nuke he has on uh -oh. the Aldus. Yeah, but look at that. CW gonna caught in the midst of everything. Oh, no, turning out the fight. It's gonna be Sans picking up a double what? kill right now. Looking for more right now. Sin is gonna Whoa. be bursted down. That's Sans with a triple kill. He's looking for the Savage right now. The Maniac will be picked up. And R7 what? is the only one standing. Sans going in again. He got the Maniac against Evo. He's the Savage run. against RRQ. Onyx is insane. They'll pick up a wipe out. Five for zero as Onyx Esports takes the lead in the best of seven. What was that? That was brilliant. Plays oh. coming in from Onyx Esports and a Savage, our first Savage in the playoffs, guys. And this is a statement for RRQ Hoshi. What? Well, this is a huge statement.